Thank you for joining me on the channel today. My name is Trent. This is Highway Spec, where we spec out some of the latest and greatest vehicles, something I do in my spare time anyway, so I'm bringing you along for the journey. And today we are going to spec out a Porsche Cayenne Coupe. Now we've spec'd out a bunch of Porsches before, most recently a Max Spec 718 Boxster GTS 4.0. So I'll link that here. Next, we do have the 911. We've done that, multiple iterations of that, the Taycan, the Macan, but we have not spec'd out a Cayenne before. And personally, I really do like the look of the Cayenne Coupe, even though it does lose some practicality. I've owned a couple Cayennes before, and so I want to go ahead and spec one out the way I would building our own Porsche Cayenne Coupe. All right, so first thing we have to do is try and narrow down what one we want. Obviously, you've got the base Cayenne Coupe. Personally, I think it needs a little more oomph to it. You've got Cayenne S. And, of course, the sweet spot, in my opinion, the Cayenne GTS. Of course, you can go all the way up to the Cayenne Turbo GT, which is incredible. The Turbo SE Hybrid Coupe, again, a very cool vehicle something that makes a ton of horsepower over 600 horsepower but i'm personally drawn more towards the gts ever since they introduced it on the first generation cayenne really cool that they have it so i think that's what i'm going to start out with i gotta go down all the way here get the technical specs out of it because it is powered by a four liter V8, and that's why I want the Cayenne GTS because it gives you that eight cylinder sound, that noise that I love. Gives you 453 horsepower, 457 pound feet of torque. That's no small amount. Yes, there are much faster ones, but obviously you have other penalties related to that. Plus I feel like it's just so fast you can't even utilize it on a typical street so 15 miles per gallon 20 miles per gallon on the highway not ideal but it is what it is and the 0 to 60 in 4.2 seconds which is pretty quick I don't think I'd have any problem with that in a regular everyday vehicle so first thing we have to do is pick a color I'm always drawn to the Carmine Red for a GTS model because it's the debut color that they did it was very unique to see it on a Porsche SUV. Obviously the color here doesn't render quite the same. It is more more red than this lets on. This kind of has a deeper hue to it, but it is not your traditional bright guards red or something like that. I really do like it. Chalk is another color that I really do enjoy with it. I do think it does need more of the five spoke wheel design what version of that i it's hard to say honestly i do kind of like the exterior color wheels those are something that very unique definitely something that not everybody can get on board with but they're not bad i, I honestly think they're not bad okay apparently there is a lightweight sport package uh for this interior trim and carbon fiber carbon fiber roof 22 inch wheels no i'm definitely not going with the lightweight package on my SUV, but it is an option. All right, so got to narrow down what to go with. And I do personally like the Satin Platinum. I think that works really well with the vehicle. As much as I like the body color, I really do like the body color. And if it was a white car, I probably would go with the white wheels. Uh, but I think we're going to stick with the Satin Platinum looks very nice interior you do have the classic gts interior package which i think looks gorgeous however i don't know if that's what i would personally go with let's try and pull it up here and see if that is the case okay so gts interior package did not do much does give you the stitching does give you the red seat belts which is very nice 
but if I'm not mistaken, it does get away with, it does do away rather with the ventilated seats, which to me is a, a must have for an SUV. And I'm trying to find out to make sure. All right, let's see, ventilated seats. Yep, makes us get rid of it. So let's try out some of the other options for the interior with the Carmine Red. Now that is going to be a tough shoe to fill because uh, you could go with the Bordeaux Red. Does that clash too much though with the exterior color? Because I do love a red interior, but I do feel like that is a bit much. So let's go ahead, let's try the Mojave Beige, which I think is probably the better option, even though it's not as sporty as the GTS interior package. The red with the beige, I think that is the right way to go. Let's check real quick to see with the gray. No, I think we gotta go with the black. Now you do have the hound's tooth. Oh, again, it gives us that lightweight sport package. Not what I wanna do personally, <laughs> but I do love a hound's tooth interior. That's the one where I'm like, okay, I can get rid of the ventilated seats for, for hound's tooth. So not gonna go with the club interior in brown. We've got the power seats with comfort memory. And 14 ways I think is plenty for me rather than going with the 18 way. All right, so let's see what this lightweight, I think we already looked at that lightweight sport package. Yep, not gonna go ahead and do that. Let's take a look at the assistance package, surround view, heads up display, the inno drive, which is there, uh, automated driving, hands-free system, but also night vision assist, which I am a big fan of. So let's go ahead and do that. 6250. Then we've got the premium package, power seats that we've already got, LED headlights, both surround sound, comfort access, heated seats, ambient lighting. Yep, all things that I will want, but let's see what the plus version does. That gives us the four zone climate control. I think that is the one to go with. All right, so we can do the massage function. Absolutely. And after driving some vehicles with the massaging seats, I definitely have to have the massaging seats. <laughs> Not going to go with the Burmester surround sound. And as much as I would like to have the upgrade sound, it just isn't worth it for me. The rear comfort seats, two plus one. I've got three kids. I'm going to need all three seats. All right, so some of the painted options here on the exterior, not really something that I would personally spec, uh, including some of these logos on the side, not really my flavor. We are gonna do a trailer hitch, however, just for the occasional towing. And then we do want to do the sport exhaust system. Now the center mounted tailpipes, that's probably gonna get rid of our tow package. So we'll see what we can do. Let's take a look. Not possible, okay. As much as that would be awesome, it looks like we're not gonna get away with that. Now, traditionally, I'm not a big fan of rear axle steering on a Porsche. I don't think it's very beneficial in day-to-day -day driving, uh, at least enough of a benefit but once you start getting into their SUVs, yeah, it might be beneficial in your everyday driving. So I think I will go with that. Staying away from the carbon ceramic brakes. Very, very rarely do I spec the carbon fiber brakes. It's just my personal preference. Uh, thermally and noise insulated glass, absolutely. Heated windshield. Now we've already got the heads up display, the surround view system. We've got all sorts of options. So the Inno Drive basically encompasses both those. Soft closed doors are really nice to have with kids because they often can't quite get the door closed tight enough. So having it just get that little extra at the end there would be great. Remote park assist. Already we're at $26,000 of options and I'm skipping over a lot of things. This is something that is really difficult about specking out a Porsche is that the options can go a bit wild. Of course, we're gonna add the heat steering wheel. I am curious to see the interior trim in the exterior color. Let's take a look inside here. 
That might be a bit much. A little bit much. I think it is. I think it is a bit much. So we're going to take that off. Give you just that more traditional black look. Power sun blind for rear side windows. Absolutely. Then I think we are good there. We'll keep the black seat belts. Not do any of the tachometer in different colors or sport chrono in different colors. Anything like that. All right, interior leather. Now we could do leather across the dash. I don't know how much I love that, but let's take a look. Oh, there we go, too far. That actually looks pretty nice. I do like the look. However, is it worth $1,200? If it came down to it and I'm like, do I want to spend the money? Probably not. So there we go. Not going to go with really any of... These options, maybe Porsche Crest headrest, uh, Porsche Crest on headrest, rather, because you do get rid of the GTS logo by going with a more traditional interior option. So we'll add that back in. Now the seat base and leather, yeah, all these things. You can add so much to it, but really how much does it add? Personally, I'm, I don't think I'm going to add any of these interior options. The carbon fiber, wood, anything like that. Now, Porsche is doing a better job with their wood. It's not just your kind of cringy wood interior like this red, red gum looks great and it will look really nice. However, it's just not personally for me. Not this natural olive gray. I, I'm actually going to look. Let's take a look. Let's see what it is. Obviously, we're going with a little more classy spec by going with the tan, full leather interior. Uh, I don't know if it's worth it. I Personally, I think I'm just gonna stick with what I've got. It, is, it isn't even a cost option to do that, but for some reason, it's just not for me. Now this anthracite chestnut, that that might be different. If that was a no cost option, I think I might do that. One One more look, let's see. One more look at this wood go too far again. No, I think I'm skipping it. There we go. Final decision. And we're at $145,110 for an everyday SUV. That's a decent amount of money. So let's take a look at the audio system here. Like I said, the Burmester 3D high-end surround sound system. Not sure if it's worth $5,800. It does have 1,455 watts and 21 individually controlled speakers. That's crazy, but the Bose system I think might be plenty. It does have 14 speakers, 14 channels. I don't think it would be a bad system. Uh, I'm not going to add the TVs in, but I am going to add the prep for it on the off chance that decide to do that later. It's not something you can really do as easily without that prep package. So yeah, we'll just go ahead and add the prep package. One day I would love to do the European delivery. However, for this vehicle, I just like it to show up to my local dealer, go pick it up whenever it gets there. And I think that's going to do it. We're not going to do any paint to sample. So what do you think? $145,530, how I would spec out a Porsche Cayenne Coupe that gets you the GTS model with the 4-liter twin-turbo V8. I added the tow package, Carmine Red, with these beautiful 22-inch wheels. You've got a tan Mojave beige, I should say, is the interior color. It does give it a two-tone with the black and heated, ventilated, massaging front seats. I mean, that is just going to be a fantastic place to be. What do you think of my spec? How would you spec it differently? Make sure to drop a comment below. But if you made it this far in the video, I want to say thank you, first of all. But also, I would ask that you consider liking the video, subscribing, clicking the bell notifications, all the things the YouTube algorithm loves so that they push this video out to more people so I can make more videos like this for you. Thank you again for joining me. I will catch you on the next one.